Hello, Wonder Hussy here, back in Vegas again, waiting on more car repairs. That's right, I was just here last week uh, having my mechanic look at my car. Well, he diagnosed it and he needed me to bring it back again. So here I am, a week later, back where I started, actually sort of lurking in the area where those tunnels are that lead under the Vegas Strip. Okay, you might remember from my video last week when I was investigating the effects of the upcoming Formula One race on the Las Vegas Strip. Well, I went down into these tunnels here that run all the way underneath the entire city of Las Vegas and are home to a lot of otherwise unhoused people. And speaking of finding places to stay, unfortunately, when I dropped my car off this morning, my mechanic told me he might not be able to get everything done in one day. He has to basically replace the entire suspension of my car. It's gonna cost me $2,500. And on top of it all, I might have to spend the night in Vegas. That's right, he might not get everything finished until the morning, which means I need to find a hotel not too far from his shop. Now, finding a hotel in Vegas isn't typically a problem, but I ain't trying to stay in any of those fancy hotels on the Strip because not only are they exorbitantly expensive, well, then they go and tack on a dang resort fee on top of the room price itself that sometimes ends up being twice as much as the listed price on the travel sites. Uh, fortunately for me, my mechanic's shop is on the other side of the railroad tracks. Not sure if you can see that, but those are the railroad tracks that run right through the heart of Vegas, separating the Strip from, well, in this case, the west side. Uh, you know what they say about going to the other side of the tracks. Well, actually, if you go to the other side of the tracks here, the far west side of Vegas is really nice, but the nearish west side well, it's not quite as fancy as the Bellagio or the Aria or the Cosmopolitan or any of them fancy hotels back that way. But there are a few hotels over here on the west side, namely the Palms, which I looked at that on Orbitz and it was kind of pricey. And then there's the Gold Coast. And well, if you've ever been to the Gold Coast, that place is just kind of a dump. And then there was another listing that I thought was interesting and that listing, which was very reasonable, I might add, was for a once great hotel. That's right, when it first opened, it was one of the, I don't know about fanciest, but it was one of the most, the trendiest, hippest, coolest places in town. Everybody wanted to go there to gamble. But now, well, to be honest, I wasn't even sure it was still open. That's right, I'm talking about the Rio Hotel Casino, which, like I said, at the time it was first built, was a pretty nice place, but now, well, it's looking a little bit busted. And by the look of the neon sign out front, I seriously thought this place was closed. You know what I mean? Look at that marquee. The front's missing, the back's missing, none of the lights are on. If I didn't know better from looking at the Orbitz website, I would have thought this hotel was closed. Matter of fact, I think they did close the Rio for at least a year during the pandemic. Remember the good old days of COVID when all the strip hotels had to shut down for, oh gosh, I think most of them were only closed for a month, something like that. But the Rio over here, I want to say it was closed for at least a year. And frankly, I figured it would never reopen. And when I walked past here last week after shooting my Formula One video, I actually couldn't tell if it was open because look how overgrown the landscaping is. I think that was the tunnel for the valet, but you can see it's all covered in graffiti. This place looks straight up abandoned. I mean, for real. First of all, there's junk strewn all over the front parking lot. This is the front lawn of this hotel. They haven't weeded or landscaped in quite a while. Look at this. I think that's another entrance to the underground valet. And that looks like no one's been in there since the time of Oh, Ponce de Leon or Bugsy Siegel at the very least. It looks like there's some kind of sign that used to say something relevant and now it's just crusted over in God knows what and the whole place looks like it's slated for demolition any day. I mean, look at the main marquee. This was the main sign advertising the Rio. 
They had those two maracas and all the feathers and neon lights. Well, it's just like a skeleton. It's crazy. If you ever wanted to see what was inside one of these fancy Vegas strip marquees, well, there's the guts up close and personal. I can't imagine why they dismantled these signs if the hotel is still operational. I mean, nothing screams, come stay here, like a skeleton of a marquee with no signage whatsoever. I mean, how am I supposed to know what the slot specials are? How am I supposed to know what the buffet special is? How am I supposed to know if they are the loosest slots in town? I just find the whole thing overwhelmingly depressing. Like one of those abandoned seaside resort towns over in England, like where Banksy did that art installation and turned it into dismal land. Hey, Banksy, if you happen to be watching this video, come on over to Vegas and do one of them their installations at the Rio. I know you could come up with something clever. Anyway, the janky exterior of this hotel has me wondering if it's as janky on the inside. So I thought I would walk over to the front entrance and go take a look for myself. But I think it's really interesting over here on the, uh, well, I'm right off the side of the road, but there's all these trees and bushes and it's relatively, you know, private to where if you were a homeless person, you could pitch a tent right back here. I bet you anything, nobody would know you were here. Oh, now that I think about it, I should have brought a tent and that way I could have saved, even though the Rio, I think the rate they posted was like $65 and that was including resort fees. I could have saved $65 and just pinched, pitched a tent right here at the side of Flamingo Road. Hey, that reminds me of that guy, Steve Wallace, who has that channel where he camps in weird places. Steve Wallace, if you're watching this video, you should try and camp right here next to the Rio. That would be a funny video. As for me, I'm a little bit too bougie and afraid of getting arrested to camp in front of a semi-abandoned hotel casino. I'd rather just cough up the $65 and sleep in a real bed and take a nice hot shower. Assuming this place isn't absolutely terrifying on the inside. Uh, I guess there's only one way to find out and that's go inside and see for ourselves if the Rio is as busted on the inside as it is on the outside. Now I'm gonna have to be careful because A, they don't really want you shooting video inside casinos and B, well, I've already been kicked out of this casino once. That's right, uh, I used to come here back in the mm, 2010, 2011, early 2010s and I had this one friend who used to stay here and gamble. I think he was playing in the, I think they had the World Series of Poker here. And so he was gambling over there. I went to see him after work one day and well, I was coming straight from a gig where I was dressed like a clown. I don't remember what the gig was. Some weird fetish modeling thing where I had a clown outfit on and clown makeup on. And so I thought, oh, I'll surprise him by showing up looking like a clown. Well, the casino don't allow no clowns inside because their facial recognition software can't penetrate clown makeup. You know how they have that software so they can recognize you if you're a, like a known prostitute or a known card cheat, you know, somebody cheats at cards. Well, because I had that makeup on and it was styming their software, security came over and said, ma'am, we're gonna have to ask you to leave. We don't allow clowns in the casino. At which point my friend who was gambling and had been drinking rather heavily, flew into a rage and said, clowns in the casino? This place ain't run by nothing but clowns. So having already been kicked out of here once, it's not an experience I wish to repeat today, especially because I might end up having to stay here tonight. So we're just gonna have to be real sneaky. Okay, wow, that was weird. 
felt like I was walking through some abandoned casino in Chernobyl, but the casino was nothing. Look at the pool. This used to be one of the most beautiful pool areas in all of Vegas, and I know because I actually hung out here a time or two, but golly, it looks like everything's been drained. It sounds like they're jackhammering the pool. Maybe they're dismantling it altogether. Wow, yeah, they drained every last drop of water out of every single pool here. There was a bunch of them too. Oh, it's just really kind of depressing. Anyway, despite the creepy semi-abandoned feel of this casino, apparently there's people staying here and there were a few people gambling here, so man, I guess the people working here still have jobs for now, but I don't know what the future of this resort is. I wanna say it was built back in the 90s and it was a hot ticket back then. In fact, the best looking women all wanted to be cocktail waitresses here, but they weren't just cocktail waitresses, they were called bevertainers because not only did they serve you your beverage, they also entertained. They had these little stages all throughout the casino where these waiters and waitresses had to get up every so often and belt out a song. And I think they sang live. It wasn't uh, lip syncing. They had to do like a little song and dance and then get back down and start serving drinks again. Unfortunately, those bevertainer stages are still in the casino, but they don't look like they're being used. Anyway, I came up here to the roof of the parking garage because it affords an excellent view of the Las Vegas Strip. And of course, my favorite part of the Las Vegas Strip, which is the entrances to these dang tunnels. I think this is a very interesting viewpoint because first of all, we see the railroad tracks that come all the way from Los Angeles, across the Mojave Desert, going over the Las Vegas Wash. This is the Las Vegas Wash. And you can see the unspeakable amount of filth and detritus gathered beneath it, I guess, because of all the summer monsoons washed all that crap down there. And then just beyond the railroad bridge, the wash goes on to the entrance of the tunnels. And it looks like folks are back in business at the tunnels. Guess they weren't gonna let a little thing like the Formula One race kick them out of their homes. Speaking of homes, well, my mechanic just called me and I do have to stay here tonight. Unfortunately, he's got so much stuff to do to my rig that he won't be done in time for me to go home today. So that meant I had to book a room and I got one here at the Rio, that's right, for the low, low price of, oh gosh, I think it ended up being something like $68. I'm gonna be able to see for myself what kind of shape these rooms are in. And lucky you, you get to come with me. Okay, I just walked back over to my mechanics to get my overnight bag. That's right, I thought ahead and packed an overnight bag because I had a feeling that this wasn't gonna be a one day operation. But the good news is he has my car up on the lift. Well, that's also the bad news because I got to see the undercarriage and oh my God, it is beat up. But on the plus side, he is replacing uh, the old icons with Bilsteins and he's, oh my God, I don't even remember everything that he said was wrong with it, but you could see a lot of the bolts are rusted and bent and broken. And it's a wonder he's able to do anything for me at all. Oh, how I wish I had a shiny, new forerunner <laughs> like this one soon enough soon enough but first i need to head back over to the rio and check out this room that they gave me i booked the cheapest room i could find on orbits which like i said was only like 68 bucks but luckily for me one of the dudes at the check-in desk recognized me i guess that's a bonus always wearing my youtube costume in public anyway he asked me <laughs> He goes, hey, don't go too hard on us because come to find out, yes, they are in a transitionary phase, but the Rio is not in danger of being closed. It's in the middle of a huge renovation. A new company bought it. It was being operated by Caesars and they're spending a ton of money redecorating the rooms. So the cheapy room that I got was in the old tower that they haven't gotten to yet, but this employee, and we'll call him John, John, if you're watching this, hi, John, Mwah, thank you. John upgraded me to a really nice room in the Ipanema Tower, which has already been remodeled. So I'm gonna walk back over to the Rio and go check out this fancy new room at the all new Rio. Or I guess I should say the soon to be all new Rio.
Dang, this is a nice room. I mean, compared to what I normally get for $68. And I've actually paid a lot more than $68 for a real dump, which this is not. Okay, I'm gonna go into wide angle mode and give you all a peek. This is one of the newly remodeled rooms in the Ipanema Tower. Now, this tower was built back in 1990. So this room is like 33 years old, but I feel like they did a really nice job. First of all, it's a suite because like it says on the sign out front, or it used to say on the sign out front anyway, Rio is an all suite hotel casino. I guess that was the big deal when it first opened. It was all suites. So, you know, normally for 68 bucks, I get basically just a bed and a closet, but this, look at that, I got a wrap around sofa. I got these funky little coffee tables that like two kidney beans. I got a big old flat screen TV. I've got a full length mirror. I've got a king size bed, a table and two chairs. Let's check out the bathroom. Oh, look how fun. Look at this vanity. Tastefully appointed. Big closet, a safe, plenty of storage, and a bathroom. Oh. There's no bathtub, I'm kind of bummed out. Since I don't have a bathtub at the Death Valley compound, I thought it would have been nice to relax in a nice hot bubble bath. Uh-oh, shower was leaking. Uh -huh. That's okay, I did tell John I would go easy on this place, and honestly, <laughs> there's no need to ask me to go easy on this. This is the nicest room I've ever gotten for this amount of money. And what's more, well, there might not be a bathtub, but there is a view of the Las Vegas Strip. Okay, it's kind of hard to see because well, there's glare on the window, but look at that. I got a view of all them fancy hotels on the Vegas Strip. There's Caesar's Palace on the right. There's the Ferris wheel, the high roller. Then there's Harrah's, the Mirage, the Wind, the whole dang shebang, all the way down to Oh golly, you might just could make out the Trump. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm too tired to even stand there and look out the window. Man, my mechanic shop is about a mile and a half from here and I walked back and forth like three times. I'm pooped, I just went and got some food across the street at Wahoo's Tacos. I think I'm just gonna have a bite uh, and do a little work on my laptop and then pass out in this awesome cozy bed. I don't know, I feel like I should have a party in here though because of this Sweet, I love these tables. Yeah, these are so funky. You could have an awesome cocktail party in here, you know? If I, I could, I suppose. I could invite, you know, 50 of my closest friends. I still have plenty of friends in Vegas. And we could have a fine time. This is a great setup for a party. Uh, unfortunately, I'm too tired. So I'm just gonna be boring and do some work. Yummy! Wahoos for the win. I've never had Wahoos tacos before, but trying to be healthy, and so rather than just go down to the casino and get blotto, I thought I would order something relatively nutritious. So I got coleslaw, beans, tofu, and looks like half an avocado. Mmm. Ooh-wee! The best part of staying in a hotel in the big city, for me, is taking a shower and washing my hair with that nice filtered city water. Where I live, our water comes from a well and my hair just never feels clean. But this shower was awesome and even the washcloths, the linens, the towels, seem kind of upgraded and nice. Look at that, Havana, 1960, Miami. It doesn't say made in Miami, but it says Miami, so I don't know, maybe it wasn't made in some Chinese factory. It was thick, it was nice, the towels are nice, the sheets on this bed are nice, and I can't wait to get into them. Yes, that's my blankie and my pillow. <laughs> I never leave home without them. I'm looking forward to getting a wonderful night's sleep and then waking up to an incredible view of Las Vegas in the daytime, out those windows. <laughs> Hope the window washers don't peek in at me. Oh, all right, well, that was a pretty good night's sleep. 
I mean, the bed, like I said, the linens were nice. Everything was super comfortable. But my worst nightmare finally happened. Every time I stay in a hotel, I'm always afraid that some ding -a -ling set the alarm on the clock radio for some ungodly hour. And so usually I remember to either, you know, check it, turn it off, or just unplug the dang thing. Well, I didn't last night. And sure enough, the alarm started beeping at 6.30 a.m. Oh, that's okay. I mean, I went to bed pretty early. It's not like this is a Vegas vacation. I'm just waiting for my car to be done. In fact, last night was probably the most boring night anyone ever spent in Vegas. All I did was sit there and work on my laptop. But I did find this interesting informational sheet laying on the uh, table over there. Basically, it talks about, thank you for joining us during such an exciting time at our resort. <laughs> so basically, they're just warning you about what might happen if you stay here during this construction project. So they go, oh, well, we're painting the outs, the pool deck. Okay, that's why they were jackhammering the pool area. They're redoing the entire pool area. They're renovating all the rooms. They're trying to do it quietly so as not to disturb anyone's sleep. And then I thought this was interesting. Building exterior. <laughs> the exterior of the building is being painted and new lighting installed. For your privacy, we kindly request that you Keep your drapery closed. Ah! <laughs> I guess they don't want people, you know, opening these shears and doing naughty things to distract the construction workers. Which you can see. These guys are over there doing some. I don't know if they're painting or fixing those weird mirrored tiles or what. Huh. Anyway, the bad news is my mechanic called me and he said, it's going to take another day to fix my car. So that means I got to stay in Vegas a second night. The good news is the rooms here are still cheap, so I'm just gonna book another room at the Rio. But the bad news is I can't get this same nice upgraded room because this all came about because of that nice young fella at the front desk, John. And unfortunately, I just went down there to see if John was there and could hook me up, but he hasn't come into work yet. Maybe it's his day off. Who can blame him? That means I gotta go on orbits, book another room, vacate this room, go hang out somewhere for four hours until check-in time, and then I'll probably get one of them their beater rooms in this old tower. But stay tuned, because that could actually be interesting. I'll give you a peek as to what one of the un-updated rooms looks like and as soon as I can check in. Okay, as promised, here's a look at one of the old rooms at the Rio. Okay, you can see that the furnishings are somewhat dated. These lamps and these bed curtains look straight up 1990s. And the wallpaper is peeling. And the carpets have also seen better days. So yeah, uh, this room has definitely seen some wear and tear, especially the security lock. I mean, no telling how many times this door has been busted open over the years. But Again, it was fine for the price. Uh, the only downside with these older rooms is they don't have those same privacy shears over the window. So you really do have to keep your blackout drapes closed if you don't want these workers staring at you. <laughs> and they are down here working. It looks like, it's kind of interesting. They're sp they spray painted all these little red sticks. And then I guess they're going around. You can see it over here on the other tower. They're going up in these window washing rigs and sticking them on the building. Cause you can kind of see, you can see it better over on the blue, blue portion. Some of these little blue lines on the uh, facade are kind of worn away. Well, I guess that's what these guys are doing. Essentially going around gluing spray painted toothpicks to the exterior of this once mighty and soon to be mighty again hotel. So yeah, if you value your privacy and being able to have daylight in a room, well then the Rio probably isn't for you at this time. But it was fine for me. I don't care. I get to go home today. I think my mechanic is almost done with my car. So I'm out of here and back to the blessed desert.